Hello and welcome everybody. Please excuse my voice as I'm recovering from the flu. Uh, doing much better now though, thank you. Uh, anyways, I'm excited for today's video because we finally learned a little bit more about two of the most demanded Ford vehicles who we've just been praying they'll become electrified. Um, now, this timeline might be a little further out than we thought, but there's some good news here. So we're gonna get into everything we know right now. Before we get into the video, I do want to just do a quick plug for you to subscribe to my channel. I'd very much appreciate it. I saw the other day that there is, it's great, it's came down. It used to be like 90% of my viewers uh, were unsubscribed, and now it's only like 79% of my viewers are unsubscribed. So you thank you guys so much. But if you're one of those people who regularly watch my videos and are not subscribed, please consider clicking the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Okay, now we can start. And sorry about that. I know it's annoying when people beg you to click buttons. So, uh, but it's, I don't know, I have to do it. It's just, YouTube basically makes me. So, sorry. Okay, <laughs> back to the video. Okay, without going too far back, we do need to set a little bit of context here. So let's talk quickly about the project in Tennessee called Blue Oval City. This is a new production and uh, just genius facility for Ford where they will be producing and creating all of their new EVs. Again, it's in Tennessee, and there are two platforms that are publicly kind of, nothing's official, but that we know about right now. We've already talked about it at length, roughly, the one that will replace the current F-150 Lightning. Now, that platform is already under works and should be ready by 2025 to start pushing out a version 2 of the Lightning. Now, the other platform that we are hearing about fits the Ranger. And just so you have a little background about that, that current platform also, the ICE version that is, the non-electric version, it holds the vehicles like not only the Ranger, but the Bronco, um, some larger SUVs, like I believe the Explorer. So it does open the gate for a lot of Ford's popular vehicles to become electrified with just these two platforms. Now, the this smaller one that we're talking about is called the TE1 platform. And this was originally set to be done by 2024, which is kind of crazy to think about. That used to be pretty far out, but in a couple of days, it will be 2023, which means that would have only been a year away. But now it is, unfortunately, that platform won't be ready till 2025, just like the Lightning 2, we'll call it, platform. So the platforms themselves are still in development and are going to take a little bit. Now, that is important to know. A lot of people have been commenting on my channel or asking me like, hey, Larry, is it worth waiting and not getting the current F-150 Lightning or another similar EV truck until Ford Electrify something like the Ranger? Well, after you hear the dates of this, you're probably going to want to find something and not hold your horses too long. Uh, I'll skip right to the news here, and it is about... <laughs> ready the ford electric rangers expect to launch in 2029 e man there's gonna be so many versions of the ranger who knows what that will look like at that point like it's kind of interesting just to think about where evs will stand at that point uh like something that's seven or eight years away you'd hope would have like what six or seven hundred miles of range or who knows solid state batteries you think that stuff but then you realize well we need to develop stuff now to get there so that just even means the solid state batteries and all the dream things that we think about evs having are still that much further uh, if you remember for gm a lot of these people have made promises by 20 30, we're going to be all electric. 2035, we're going to be all electric. Um, frankly, as much as, I mean, I run an EV channel. I love electric vehicles, but it's going to be tough for anyone to do that right now. Uh, it's just, it's, it's not going to happen. Now, granted, I do believe that plug-in hybrids will help us get there. 
I mean, I think there could be, uh, if you look at what Toyota is doing with plug-in hybrids right now, I've driven a lot of those lately, so they're fresh on my mind. Uh, Jeep is having some great success with their plug-in hybrids. There's a lot of cool things they can do. They have the lifestyle of an EV if you're not traveling a lot, but then if you're doing road trips, you switch over to your uh, good old-fashioned ICE engine and get the best of both worlds. So if these companies like Ford and, um, you know, I guess there's not a ton of plug-in hybrid for Ford and GM right now, but if they had a split of some electric and some plug-in hybrid, that's a powerhouse um, offering for the consumer because you have the best of both worlds. If you owned a plug-in hybrid and an electric, you're going to barely spend on gas. It's going to be great for the environment, and you still don't have to deal with any of the problems that come with EVs because, let's face it, there still are a lot of problems like public charging or cold weather range loss. Like, There's a lot of kinks we got to iron out. I mean, I love being the person to test that. That's why I own and have owned multiple electric vehicles, but not everyone's ready to just dive in. So excuse that rant. I just really wanted to talk about that. (laughs) Anyways, back to this um, upcoming, we'll call it, release. And now you're probably asking, well, Larry, we talked about the Ranger. What about the Bronco? Well, that's just as far off, friends. I hate to say it, but these two very popular... EVs are somehow being put on the back burner. Now, hopefully it's for good reason. Maybe when they want to electrify two of their most popular vehicles, they want to do it right. They don't want to rush anything out. They want them to be ready to go with a new platform, fully decked out seven or eight years from now. But as I mentioned, this TE1 platform is still great news because hopefully, as I mentioned, it's going to be done by 2024, 2025, and it's not going to take four years to get their first vehicle on that platform. However, a great reliable uh, SUV is probably going to come before that, which is something that could really, really open some eyes. There's, of the new electric EVs that are, uh, of the new electric SUVs that are in like the traditional, we'll call it mom mobile category, uh, dad mobile. I, I, I obviously need that with two kids. Uh, something that could satisfy, I don't know, like a Tahoe replacement or a uh, Ford Explorer replacement. There's not a lot of those on the market. Like off the top of my head, there's three. One is a Tesla Model X, which is either too over the top for most or too expensive for most. Two, there's the uh, not even out yet upcoming uh, Volvo EX90, which looks great, but still an $80,000 vehicle. That's a lot of out of the range for a lot of folks. There is the um, another (laughs) expensive one, the R1S from Rivian, which looks amazing and is totally checking all of the boxes in my book. But again, also expensive. And upcoming from Kia, the EV9, which is my one of my favorite upcoming things that I can't wait to see in real life. However, we don't know a ton about that yet, although that should be out very soon. So all that said, there's not a lot of competition in the larger SUV, electric SUV space, meaning hopefully that's on the table for Ford and they can strike soon. And I'm talking by 2025, 2026 with a maybe electric Explorer. It would be a home run, especially if they can keep it in like the 40 to 60 price range. Woo, would that be a hit? That would could been so many of that SUV um, segment to switch over. And I think that's a problem now because all of the electric SUVs now are very, very small. They're compact SUVs, um, and they have to be to hit those range marks of 300, 250 mile range. Anything bigger, people are really struggling with. Now, hopefully with these new platforms, as I mentioned, that won't be an issue and we can really see what they can do. It's not all bad news if you are looking for an electric-ish truck. Now... If you don't need to go full electric and you're interested in a plug-in interested in a plug-in hybrid, there are some pretty solid rumors that Ford will actually have a plug-in hybrid version of the Ranger by 2025 and 
that's not too far. And I can't wait to see what that will look like. And now I don't really need to reiterate why that's so important. But I mean, a plug in hybrid truck, again, I just, I really think as Ford stepped into electrification, maybe that should have been their first step. Like, obviously, the problem with gas vehicles or the gas truck is, well, it's expensive to run. It uses so much fuel and it's a challenge. The problem with electric trucks is the same thing. It consumes so much energy. It's a big, powerful vehicle. So if you still have a mostly gas version of an electric truck, but has a battery to offset some of those costs and maybe get a couple uh, stat boosts out of it as well. Like, who could complain about that? I mean, it's just a no-brainer. And I'd love to see an electric Maverick as well or plug-in uh, plug Maverick as well. So um, my eyes are peeled. Can't wait to see it. With that, I will end this video of me rambling. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed just coming along for the ride. Um, you're the best. I really appreciate you guys so much, and I will end it here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.